Hello, good morning, and welcome to another edition of um, our Office Engineering Series. So today, I want to um, show you how to actually uh, how the cascade control system works. Um, actually, for us, for many of us, um, if not all, uh, or do you know how this um, um, the cascade system works? But um, for the very few of us who may not know, the cascade system actually has the primary controller and the secondary controller. Um, okay, I would just advise you go to it online. Um, you could just read about it. But what I will do here is visually show you how it actually operates um, via the formatting that I did this year. Um, actually, from the programming side, right, from the back end, if you're really working with the uh, you know, process facility, um, you may probably have come across the uh, cascade system. You already know how it works visually, but uh, from the back end, I want to show you how this is actually being programmed. Uh, remember, I said I'm using Amazon Data V this year. <clears throat> All right, so um, this is the simple cascade loop we'll be actually uh, demonstrating. We have a pressure transmitter which feeds a pressure controller, and if I apply a set point there, the output of this pressure controller becomes a set point of the flow controller, and the flow controller already has um, an input. Again, coming from a flow transmitter, and then the output of the flow controller actually goes to a control valve, which does the um, uh, final control, right? All right, so this is how a cascade system works. So, for us here, for this example, the pressure control, the pressure controller, the PC, is the master controller, and then the FC here is the slave controller. All right, so um, if we go to our factory. Um, Okay. If we go to our Emerson Data D, we will find that uh, uh, what I will do here is just create a new area. But we have some areas here, so let me take a new area called Cascade. So I have a new area here called Cascade, right? Let me open that up. All right. So the, the context of my Cascade is currently empty, but um, I will need. Um, the cascade master. I need some templates. Of course, I went to the analog control, and then I also get the cascade sleeve. The both work hand in hand. And then I also need from the monitoring templates here, or need two analog templates for monitoring. That is for analog transmitters. Remember the, the pressure transmitter um, for the master loop, and then the flow transmitter for the slave loop. All right. So I'm going to rename this task now. Let me call this. And then I'm going to call this PC001. And then for the cascade slave, let's call that FC001. Um, for your this, for this PC001. And then for this one, I call it FC001. Right? Okay, so if I like, click on this and I open with Control Studio, remember the flow transmitter. If I open this up with the Control Studio, I will find, sorry, taking the closer. If I open this up with the uh, Control Studio, which is our programming environment, I will find that uh, it really has an AI module inside of it, right? It really has an AI module. So I will just say, Assign this to the editor node. This is our simulation node, and say OK to this and download. All right, so uh, that is what I will do. OK, so uh, let me just minimize this and do the same for this other one. Uh, I can just go ahead and do that from without opening it, but I will leave them open because I want to simulate their value. So I will save this, assign this. So the Venetian node, and then yes, to this, download this, okay, to that, yes. Yeah. All right, so that is for the pressure computer, I suppose, yes. Then for the flow controller, the MC again, I want to open with control module. And for this one, I want to set some parameters, I want to actually read the, I'm making this smaller so you can see. Uh, if I go to this special item block, 
I want to actually pull this input parameter out because I want to read the parameter of the FT001, right? The flow transmitter. And the parameter type is going to be from a power reference and it belongs to the input output category. So if I go to browse, um, I'm interested in this task kit. So flow transmitter, yes. I want to read AI block and the output of that AI block, right? Okay, this is okay. And then I will just connect this to this. Okay. Input of this block. All right, so I will right click on this. I want to see the set point, of course, which will be set by the master controller, but I just want to show parameter of the set point so we can see the values as it changes. So on the input side, I want to get see the set point. So SP is for set point. And then I show okay to this. So you could see that I have XP here. All right, so um, it's going to be set by the master control by the master controller. All right, so this is fine. Um, I will need to set some parameters for this PI, PID block, please. So actually, currently it's by default um, indirect, but of course you understand from your control parameters, you can actually see whether you want it to be direct or whether you want it to be indirect. Uh, currently, um, your sleeve has to be in cascade mode. Right, it surely has to be in cascade mode, and then uh, that is for this offload. We still we do these things for the online mode. All right, so that is for that. I will save this on downloading. So let's go to our master for doing this. So yes, for this. Okay, so for the. Okay, well, no, put the master here. All right, so if I go here for PC001, open with Control Studio. <coughs> so, so the master is open now. Uh, what you can do is the same point of setting, uh, but for this cascade slave, uh, when I click on it and I go to convert. And then to existing um, object, of course, in the cascade area. Uh, I'm attaching it, I'm telling you, yes, you belong to the FC001, right? That sleeve. So that is who the sleeve is. So FC001 is that. So, all right, so I'm going to get the same increase parameter again because I want to read the parameter of PT. I want to read the value of PT001, right? Which is the present transmitter. All right, so for this, it's going to be an external reference, and of course, it belongs to the IO uh, category. So if I browse this in the cascade area, the PT, I want to read this value on the output parameter, the app parameter, right? So it's okay to that, and then I connect it to this. All right, so the next thing I will do is I will get the IO, uh, the analog input from the uh, IO drop down. From the IO drop down, just to get some space. I would have clicked on this. I want to get the show parameter. I want the set point. Remember, from here, we said this one has a set point as an input also. All right, so if I go there, I'm um, already there. So I want, uh, what am I? I want to see the set point. I want to see the set point here, and then I will say okay to this, and I can connect this to here, <coughs> right? Okay, so you could see that uh, this module will present your set point. Of course, I'm going to link this to the HMI. Of course, you probably wouldn't even need this uh, uh, to start with, but again, just for this purpose, for this simulation, I'm going to use this AI block, and then um, in the next video, I'm going to connect this thing to our HMI and see how. You can also do that on the HMI for um, the operators. You wouldn't have to come. In, you should. You wouldn't have to come to this uh, backend to actually change values. <laughs> All right. So um, uh, again, we are supposed to set the parameters for this. Just like I said, the order is direct or indirect. I wouldn't bother for now. So um, for a cascade system, the master would have to be in auto mode, right? But this thing could be changed by the operator. And based on the demands of the system, but for now, 
Donc c'est un haut de un bon programme. Je vais essayer, ok, ta date, tu sais, on va faire une autre chose. Merci, ça va. All right, so, um, I would save this, and I find this, so this, and then we can download this mode. All right, so, we have already done that, but um, we need to assign the cascade area to the alarms on events of Ebenezer, right? We need to do that. We need to do that. Assign module. Firstly, I need to send it to the assign module. Uh, it's currently being updated by user page. So, assign, I think, okay, PC001, as is already in the assign module. So, I need it in the alarm on events. Alarm on events. Yes, I want that there also. <coughs> so, I'll just download this system back. Okay, so complete. Uh, I think we should be done. All right. So uh, if I go to my master and I put this in online mode, uh, you should see this okay, this is my slave. I need to set the parameters again, make sure they are not changed from what they were. Okay, in the online mode, this is still in cascade, which is fine. So let's see for this one. If I go to the online mode for the master, are you still in auto mode? So let's find out. Yes, it is still in auto mode, which is fine. All right, so but the values um, it is reading for the PT is zero. So but let's set this set point first of all. So um, I would enable my set point, my simulation for the set point, and then I would say I want the value of five zero, and then I'm going to change this to good long cascade. So I'm going to change this to 50. I've changed that to 50. Let's see the value points in here, right? At 50. It's already approaching 25 for me, and it is actually going to the slave loop, right? Which is S1. So if I go back, if I go to FC001, I should find 25 actually here and on this set point tab. So you can see the decision of the master actually comes to the slave. But let's see how this thing works um, in a real scenario. So this is our, let's go to our PC. So let's say uh, for the PC, uh, let's assume that your pressure transmitter is actually, let's um, enable this simulation for it. I say, okay. So let's say that your, that your pressure transmitter is actually reading a value of uh, a uh, 3 zero, right? Let's say it's reading a value of 3 zero again, good long cascade. Now, if I go back to my master, it should be my master, my master. Now, um, I expect to be reading the value of 25, of, um, what did I put, 25? Okay, it's not in an online mode. Yes, I want to save it. For the pressure transmitter. So... Let's do that again to what again happens then. So if I say 20 or 30, any value. So let's say this is what the transmitter is reading at this point, the pressure transmitter. Then if I go to my PC, I should be reading that value of 30, right? So the value of 30 has actually come here. So you could see that this one has actually changed to 10, right? So um, if I change this value again, um, where's my PC? I have a hard time finding the PC there. All right, so if I change this to say 20, and then I should have this value 20 here, and then this one will just be changing. But um, we could have this value change gradually, and then you will see. All right, so but that's oh, oh, definitely put to that. Or you could see that this one is actually delivering some output. Of course, you have to turn this which we haven't done, and which one. We're going to do at this uh, time. So, if you go to your place, your FC, you see that this value is actually being displayed here. So, your, your FC is also returning your valve. This is the final decision to the valve, right? Telling the valve to be opened 100%. 
you see the set point here and then seven the value of zero okay let's simulate this one and say okay for now it has received a let's say your ft here is receiving a value of uh, let's enable the simulation and let's say it's receiving a value of uh, what is that so it's receiving a value of uh, let's say 40 for now right of course go down cascade i say okay to this all right so if you see the pc oh sorry wasn't in, in this mode so i didn't change that i have to repeat this process so let's say for zero and then go down cascade okay so you see that you see that the valve is beginning to close right and then if you see your piece your uh, main valve this is 38 whatever it is doing it is sending it to at a set point to this one right you could see that the set point to this one is changing and actually what you'll be seeing here is that your value in the field the power position is 98 94 which was before and it's going to 100 right so you can see that if I change this FT again and I say, okay, your FT value um, has gone to, let's say, 80, right? I want the valve to start closing. So you could see that um, this is 80. You could see that the valve is beginning to close, right? It's going to close. So, but this value for the transmitter, of course, you know, said that as it changes in the valve position, you also expect that um, the 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 transmitter values will change, and then this valve will respond respond accordingly. But the beautiful thing here is, uh, you could see this value is dynamic, and it's as a result of what is actually coming from the master, right? So whatever the master decides here, that is what it gives as a set point to the slave. So um, we can actually link this to the um, um, HMI. And then from there, the operator can make changes, and you see how these things are easily being changed, right? You can put it in cascade mode, you can change the set point, you can do whatever he wants to do. You um, um, can put it in manual, he can operate, do whatever he wants to do actually from the HMI. But the uh, basic thing which I want to reiterate here again is that the output of the master, in this case, the pressure control valve, which is currently 94, whatever it is here does not go to the valve, it actually goes to the slave loop. And the slave loop for us here is our flow controller. And then this value will always dynamically change, right? As it changes, the valve will open up or, or do whatever it wants to do to adjust this life value, which is the transmitter value, to the set point, which is requested by the master, which is in this case, the pressure controller. I hope this um, makes sense. And um, if you have any confusion about it, you can drop a message for me. Um, otherwise, um, have a wonderful day. And then see you in our next video uh, where we're going to link this to the HMI and see how we're going to change the values and do everything from the HMI based off of uh, uh, using the uh, face plate uh, and, um, and or the detailed face plate. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.